نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما واتقوا الله ويعلمكم الله يا ايها المؤمنون اوصيكم والنفس بتقوى الله عز وجل كما امرنا في في القران الكريم وقال صلى الله وقال سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته My dear brothers and sisters I advise you I advise myself first to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do not die except in the state of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us over and over again and we remind each other with this verse in each khutbah with the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wallahi brothers and sisters by Allah it doesn't matter how we look like it doesn't matter how we speak like if we have no taqwa in our hearts and it doesn't matter what we do if we don't follow the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as he said sallallahu alaihi wasallam taraktu fikum la in tamassaktum fi لن تضل بعد أبدا كتاب الله وسنة أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام I left you I left amongst you something that if you hold on to no one will go astray after me بعدي after I go ever أبدا the book of Allah and my sunnah the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَإِنَّ أَسْدَقَ الْحَدِيثِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَحَيْرُ حَادِي حَادِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَا سَلَّمْ خَيْرُ حَادِي حَادِي مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَا سَلَّمْ The best, the most noble, the most truthful of books is the books of Allah, is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the best guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is, brothers and sisters, what we are left with in a world full of division, full of issues, full of anger and pride, kibr. Everyone thinking that somehow I have the right to do this or the right to do that. Calling to your own rights and not looking at the rights that are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Ummah has suffered so much and it's suffering and we don't realize we're in the Mar month of March right now and the same month in 1924 the Ummah suffered a big hit where it ceased to exist. It was not an Ummah anymore. In the real sense because someone decided to stop it and that was a big hit to our ummah and after that more and more hits came dividing us into different aspects and facets pushing us away 
from the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The worst thing, newly invented matters. Every newly invented matter is a bid'ah. Every bid'ah is a misguidance. Every misguidance is in the hellfire. This is not me speaking or any of the brothers speaking or the, anyone. This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we, we as Muslims these days, we tend to pick and choose, brothers and sisters, what we believe, what we stand for, what is our Islam, do you take parts of the book and you reject other parts? You disbelieve in other parts? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us to be careful of what we do with Islam. Islam is not something that we cater and we tailor based on how we want it to be. It is Something that should be based on Qala Allah, Qala Rasul, Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, or Sunnah Al Khulafa Al Rashidin Al Mahdiin, and what the scholars after them said, based on what the Prophet said, that the best of generations is my generation, and then it moves on. So we as Muslims have this duty to safeguard our families, our communities, ourselves first, ourselves first, brothers and sisters. For how can you save someone drowning if you yourself are drowning? Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu hu anfusikum wa ahlikum and save yourselves first. And then save your families from the hellfire. Fire whose fuel is men and stones. And the Mufasirin say, because the people will be burning in hellfire. And also the stones, as some of them say, are the idols that will be thrown in there as fuel. So do you save yourself from hellfire, brothers and sisters? How do you save yourself from hellfire? How do we save ourselves from hellfire? And we live in today's world walking on the street, driving on the street, interacting with people, alhamdulillah in a Muslim country, looking like Muslims, talking like Muslims. But we need to ask ourselves, where do we stand in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Where is our iman? At what level? Are we ready to jump for anything? To argue for anything? To talk about anyone? Or do we have that taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we give it a second thought? If someone says something about us, are we ready to confront them? To save our honor and our pride? Or... Will we make sure that what that person said was correct? Or that he actually said it or she said it? When someone will cut us on the street with their car, are we ready to make some signals, some gestures with our hands? Or will we have patience? As Allah is with those who have patience. And this intro, yeah, and brothers and sisters, just to lead us to this simple topic of today's khutbah, what is so important. Because we all 
do this, or most of us. I include myself in there. And it's how do we behave on the road? How do we act upon the road? How do we act upon this earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this amana to walk on this earth and to be his representatives in showing at least Islam to the people somehow. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he has established us in the world, on this earth. And he has made us, he has made this place as a place of abode, of li living. However, many people, very few people are those who are thankful. Are we thankful? What is our life? Do we live, walk on this earth? That's it? My way? I don't care who's coming next to me. It's my way or the highway. Or do we understand that this is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? That this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has empowered us or given us as a trust? How do we understand that? When you walk on this street and there's other Muslims or non-Muslims, do we know the rights of the road? Do we know the right, the right of way? Because I've noticed, subhanAllah, and after being involved and in living in a place where a lot of people don't respect, for example, the stop sign, that you yourself sometimes catch yourself that you don't respect it. So why is it written there, stop, and we don't stop? We have to ask ourselves this question. It says S-T-O-P, qif, in Arabic, stop. But we don't stop. Actually, you have to, the person who doesn't have a stop has to stop for the person who's got to stop. When the car is squeezing in, we want to push them more to the side. Don't let them. Because I should, even though it's a red light, and you're not going to get very far, but you push, 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 don't let him go. You know if you make an intention, subhanAllah, to let this brother go for the sake of Allah, Allah will bless you. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ تَفَسَّهُ فِي الْمَجَالِسِ فَفْسَحُ and he makes space. You can deduce from, you can learn from this ayah something very beautiful. Make space for your brothers, man. Leave some space. Don't push them. Don't push them to the side where they can't go anymore. We see this all the time. And the question again goes back to why. Why do we do this, brothers and sisters? Deal with people in the right way. What is stopping us as Muslims from following that sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu Smile, let him go. Give him, may, may, give him the benefit of the doubt. He might be suffering. His child might be in the car, sick, trying to get to the hospital. You don't know. But at the same time, the person who is doing slalom between the cars, shifting and turning, should also have the understanding and the taqwa in his heart that he is putting the other people in difficulty. So it's a both, it's a two-way thing. But let's put it here, very simple. Brothers and sisters, driving a car, walking on the street, has its own rights and principles that should be followed Islamically. As the Prophet ﷺ told us, to give the right of way, to reply with the salam, to lower our gaze. And in many, there's many ahadith and ayats that talk about things that are applicable to this topic. But I want to make it a bit more for us as to our lives. What do we do? So let us take it upon ourselves that next time we sit in that car, 
First and foremost, we should know that we might not get out of that car. We might not have a second chance of getting in that car. So we should start by saying the dua. Subhanallah sahara lana hada. Say the dua that we all have memorized and learned. So that we don't know that we're going to come back or not. And when we drive that car, we should understand the following ayah. وَلَا تُفْصِدُ فِي الْأَرْضِ Don't spread facade on the earth. With the car, by walking, by whatever, whatever position you are when you are driving or on the street outside. Facade is not just in committing sins that we think are sins. Do you think that when you cut someone off, when you push someone from the back and flash them, so they can't see anymore. And you're inches away from their bumper driving 120 on the highway. Do you think Allah is happy with you? Do you think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is happy with that behavior? When someone by mistake might have done something, and then you pass them and you stop in front of him, push him back and press on the brake so you can pay him back. Do you think Allah is happy with, with us? Is this something beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Because we see it too many times. And it has caused so many accidents, so many people that we might know and love have left us because of some of these acts of people. That they had this kibber in their hearts that they thought that I need to show this person how to drive. Brothers and sisters, we need to rethink our position in Islam. Because if we think that Islam is just praying in the masjid and being the first one in the masjid and that's it, well guess what? That's what the Dutch wanted the Indonesians to believe some years ago. Let them think it's only praying. That's it. That's Islam is praying and that's it. Let them pray. Let them memorize the Quran. Let them memorize the Quran in the best tajweed. And give each makharaj and each harf its haq. But the meaning, don't give it any haq. Don't let them understand it. Don't let them implement it. Because this is not Islam. Yes, it's very important to pray. It's the first, one of the most important things after believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, we need to expand Islam to our daily lives. When we leave this masjid, are we not Muslims anymore? We can smile to each other in the masjid and say, Salaamu Alaikum, yet outside, it's like we're driving Formula One cars and pushing people and causing trouble to people. Maybe it might be the same person that you met in the masjid and smiled in their face and you don't even know it. So Islam is not just in the masjid. Outside of the masjid, in our houses, in our homes, Islam is there, should be there. On the streets, Islam should be there. How we deal with the Cleaners on the street, Islam should be there. How we deal with our families, our friends, our brothers, our sisters, Islam should be there. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has taught Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the best of manners. How to deal with the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we need to follow that. We need to return back to it. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us back to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa li wa lakum wa li sa'il muslimin. Astaghfiruhu inna wa ghafur rahim. Astaghfirullah.
بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم Brothers and sisters, one simple question. One simple question. Do we give the rights to other people, the rights that are entitled to them? In every situation, do we give the rights of the people in every situation? This is something I need to ask myself and you need to ask yourself. Do we follow the Sunnah of Muhammad وسلم, in our daily life, not just by wearing the kandura? It is important to have this humble dress. But a holistic Sunnah that encompasses the behavior, the akhlaq, the manners, the humbleness. That Muhammad portrayed to us. Do we do that? This is a question that we need to ask. When we are outside, brothers and sisters, in those cars that Allah has blessed us with, those fancy cars that Allah has blessed us with, don't think that you earned that car. Allah has given it to you. And Allah can take it away from you in no time. And we've seen it so many times. 300,000, 400,000 smashed in no time. Including with the people inside. Because people thought that, hey, I earned this. I'm the one. I need this. I desire this. I'm the one who's who deserves this. And then Allah show them this is not the case. We need a change, a paradigm shift, brothers and sisters. We need to come back to the sunnah. Okay? As opposed to progressive mentality that people have, we need to have a regression. We need to go back. People think that going ahead and evolving, supposedly, whichever way it is, that this is the way to go. Well, I say that we need to regress a bit back. We need to go back to those times when people understood what it means to be a righteous person. People had honor and people had character. We need to go back to the times of those pious companions who used to say, Rasulullah was with us, revelation def descended upon him, and we used to do what he did. This is the generation that led the world. This is the generation that inspired the world. The generation that laid down the Renaissance for the whole world, only later to be denied and to be claimed from different parts to the point that today people don't even know the Arabic numbers, that the numbers that we're using are Arabic. That people don't even know that laws that are practiced in countries are inspired from the Quran or the Sunnah or the Fiqh books. Because we failed at being those people that embodied the Sunnah, that acted in this right manner, that smiled, that had this gentleness, that understood the hadith, Inna Allah rafiq wa yuhibbu rifq. Allah is gentle, He loves gentleness. We fail to understand that Allah is beautiful, He loves beauty. Inna Allah jameel wa yuhibbu jamal. We fail to understand wa khaliq in nas bi khuluq in hassan and deal with people in the right manner. We have succeeded at piling books and memorizing, and, but we have failed at applying simple, simple concepts. So brothers and sisters, when we are out there, we need to question ourselves. 
Am I representing Islam properly? Be it at the wheel of the car. The brothers, mashallah, nice car, swinging left and right on the highway on the back, whilst while you bust it, you're, you're biting his dust, it says on the back on the sticker, mashallah. We can all put those stickers on the back of our cars, mashallah. But this is a wrong understanding of tawakkul. What does it mean, mashallah? And it's, it's present here. And the first time I've ever heard this, of why some of these people put these stickers on their cars and then they act like they do, I got it from a non-Muslim, from an article in a paper here in the UAE, from a non-Muslim who's looking from the outside at the Muslims of how they drive, and they say, these guys are using the name of Allah in the wrong way, the name of God, by saying that, you know, I can drive like crazy, and whatever happens, it's Allah's will. This is a wrong understanding. A wrong understanding of Aqidah, of our deen, a wrong understanding of the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My dear brothers and sisters, I don't want to, to prolong it too much, but I want to leave us with a homework. Let us go back to the Sunnah. Let us go back. When we leave this masjid, that we implement Islam outside. When we get on that car, that we follow the Sunnah of saying the dua. Today, when you leave this place, when we get into the car, we see someone trying to get him, let them go in. Make niyyah in your heart to get the ajr. Let the brother go. If someone's cutting you off or doing something, make dua for them. If you can advise them, advise them. But lead by example. Follow the rules. The rules are laid down for a purpose. And disobeying these rules can result in sins, brothers and sisters. I remind this myself first before any one of you. And you, please, remind your families. Spread the word. Let, us, let it be the homework. That we will leave this masjid and be better Muslims, inshallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bring us back to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to forgive us, to accept our deeds and to make us be sincere in our hearts so that, yani, as Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ that every deed is according to his intention. Let's renew our intention, brothers and sisters, that we go back to the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only in looks, or in speech, but in actions, in feelings, in emotions, in the heart, in the taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deserves. And we send peace and blessings on Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Quran, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ورضى اللهم الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ولسائر صحابة أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اغفر لي والمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكون من الخاسرين وتب علينا انك انت التواب الرحيم ربنا اتنا في الدنيا حسنا وفي الاخره حسنا وقنا عذاب النار واخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين واقيم الصلاه ان صلاتك تنحى الفحشاء والمنكر وذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون فانيثينج يعني برذرز اند سيسترز ذات كيم جود ا ديس قطعه إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا الفتنا نظروا فيها فلما علموا أنها ليست لحي وطنا جعلوها لجة واتخذوا صالح الأعمال فيها سفنا إن لله عبادا فطنا طلقوا الدنيا وخافوا